And here is the Writer's Almanac for Monday. It's the 3rd of August, 2020. It's the birthday of the crime novelist P.D. James, born in Oxford, England, 1920. She worked as an administrator for the National Health Service for years, got up early in the morning to write before she went to her day job. She was 42 when she published her first crime novel. It took her three years to write. The book was Cover Her Face. It was a big success. She decided to stay with the crime genre. Her big breakthrough was in 1980 with her eighth book, Innocent Blood, books in which she created a character, Detective Adam Dalglish. He's with Scotland Yard, intelligent, dedicated, unsentimental. It's the birthday of the journalist and war correspondent Ernie Pyle, Ernest Taylor Pyle, born near Dana, Indiana, 1900, went to Indiana University, went to work on the Washington Daily News, where he was unhappy sitting behind a desk. So he and his wife packed up their Ford Roadster and took off on a 9,000-mile trip around the United States. When World War II broke out, he became a war correspondent, writing stories from the front, from the soldier's perspective, won the Pulitzer Prize. Ernie Pyle said, someday when peace has returned to this world, I want to come to London again and stand on a certain balcony on a moonlit night and look down upon the peaceful silver curve of the Thames with its dark bridges. But he was killed by machine gun fire on an island near Okinawa, April 18, 1945. It was on this day, 1841, Juliana Horatia Ewing was born in the village of Ecclesfield in Yorkshire, England. She loved to make up stories for her siblings based on Hans Christian Andersen and the Grimm brothers. She wrote plays for her siblings. When she was 18, she founded a lending library and then began her publishing career, writing stories for magazines. Her book, The Brownies and Other Tales, was very popular, practically unknown today, but immensely popular in her time. And the founders of the Girl Scout movement named their junior-level scouts Brownies. Here's a poem for today by Connie Wanick, entitled Walking Distance, for Stanley Dentinger, 1922 to 2004. Walking distance used to be much farther, miles and miles. Your grandfather, as a young man with a wife and new baby son, walked to and from his job, which was in the next town. That was Iowa, 1946. And it was not a hardship, but an opportunity, which is youth speaking. And also a particular man of German descent, walking on good legs, on white gravel roads, smoking cigarettes, which were cheap, though not free as they'd been during the war. Tobacco burned toward his fingers, but never reached them. The fire was small and personal, almost intimate, glowing bright when he put the cigarette to his lips and breathed through it. So many cigarettes before bombing runs, and none had been his last. A great surprise. Sometimes he passed a farmer burning field grass in the spring, the smoldering line advancing toward the fence. He had to know what he was doing so near the barn. You had to be close to see the way blades of dry grass passed the flame along at a truly individual level, very close to see how delicious a meal the field was to the farmer on a damp, calm, almost English morning, ideal for walking. A poem by Connie Wanick, Walking Distance, from On Speaking Terms. That's the Writer's Almanac for Monday, August the 3rd. The Writer's Almanac, funded by donations from listeners like you, and it's available on PRX. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.